Hello students, up to me again. Just want to briefly talk a little bit about Martin Buber's uh, concept of the I-thou relationship and compare and contrast that with the I-it relationship. Now, I think there's a couple, couple three ways I could go about this. Um, let me um, start off with a gesture, an expression you may have encountered. Uh, if you know anyone who is uh, from the uh, India, Indian South subcontinent, and um, this that is this. Namaste. This is a common greet, greeting in India. What does it mean? Well, I've seen a number of different ways that it, the concept has been interpreted. My understanding is that uh, what they mean, well, first let me observe that although in Hinduism they have many gods, Ultimately, the ultimate reality is what they call Brahman, which has no characteristics of itself and is in all things. The ultimate reality in Hinduism is ultimate and sheer, unparalleled uh, consciousness called Brahman. So, why is that relevant? Well, Namaste, one of the common interpretation of that is that the aspect of the divine within me acknowledges the divine within you. Hence this gesture, because you see, you have two hands, but they're put together uh, palm to palm, and you are bowing over it, your hands as a sign of respect, but the two are one. So I think the concept of namaste uh, in Hinduism, I think we can draw an analogy with what Martin Buber means when he talks about the I-Thou relationship, that you are acknowledging the other person as having an internal reality that is as valuable and important uh, as your own. Whereas the I-It relationship is about regarding the other person as an instrumentality. Uh, sadly, there are people who um, spend their entire lives engaging with other people from an I-it transactional um, context. Um, actually, let me pull up a, another video background and make another couple analogies then. So, And let me talk a little bit about this guy. This, of course, is a picture of Sigmund Freud. And it strikes me that Sigmund Freud came up with a concept that is, I think, in some ways, very similar to Martin Buber's I Thou versus I It. Uh, Sigmund Freud said that we can um, distinguish between two different ways of interacting with people or things or creatures. And he called this the difference between object choice and subject choice. If you are uh, engaging with someone, some being, something as a object, well, then it is merely transactional. It's merely something that you use. Whereas if you interact with other people as a subject, then you are acknowledging essentially that there is something within their mind, their heart, their soul that is just as valid and important as yours. Let me just refer you to one more uh, important figure. And this is a representation of Immanuel Kant. Now, Immanuel Kant is one of the great philosophers of all time. Uh, he did works on epistemology and metaphysics. Uh, but uh, for this class, one of the things that's most interesting about Immanuel Kant is what he wrote about ethics. And in one of his books on ethics, he makes an interesting distinction. He talks about the difference between treating other people as a means to an end as opposed to as an end in themselves. Well, by that, I think we once again very, get very close to Martin Buber's concept of I thou. If we treat others as an end in themselves, they have innate value and dignity and we respect that. But if we treat other people as a means to an end, then 
basically it's transactional and were again engaged in the I it relationship. Now that's not to say that the I it relationship isn't appropriate in some contexts, um, but it does um, come up when we talk and think about the natural world and the environment. Um, because to the extent that we look at the natural world, the ecology as an object to use Sigmund Freud's expression or as a uh, means to an end to use Kant's expression, then we won't value and care for it in the way that we should. But if we go with Kant's expression of, tre of treating the natural world as an end in itself, or if we use Freud's concept of subject choice, if we see that a tree or a flower participates in life, or life essence, if you will, kind of like namaste, uh, in uh, a way that has value unto itself, we will not there, therefore be inclined to abuse nature or the natural environment. So summing up then, I think the way, another way of understanding Martin Buber's I thou relationship, first we have the concept of namaste. In Hinduism, we have uh, Freud's distinction between subject choice versus object choice. I thou would be subject choice, um, uh, and I it would be object choice. And also finally, we get back to Kant, and his distinction between treating others as a end in themselves as opposed to a means to an end. When we treat others as a um, end in themselves, that is very close to what Martin Buber understood or was trying to convey with his uh, description of I thou. So, gosh, I hope that's made this uh, relatively clear. Um, if you want me to elaborate or clarify, please feel free to contact me by email and I'll be glad to do so. Ciao.